Hello and welcome to Tax Matters. My name is Chamaka Ohaochi. The Finance Act 2019 came into effect on the 13th of January 2020. Containing 56 different sections, the Finance Act introduced 80 different changes to seven different tax laws, and that is why it is considered a game changer. Two prominent changes introduced by the Finance Act are the increase in the rate of VAT, which took effect on February 1st, 2020, and the amendment to the Stamp Duty Act. And you will agree with us that stamp duty matters are currently trending. Questions are being asked and clarifications are being sought. In response to requests by taxpayers, the Federal Inland Revenue Service has issued a press release on the matter. The press release in our possession begins by reiterating the fact that stamp duty is not new in Nigeria, but rather that the principal act dates back to 1939. The stamp duty legislation has, over the years, undergone several amendments, the most recent being the amendments introduced by the Finance Act 2019. Among other things, the Finance Act now recognizes technology, e-commerce, and cross-border transactions in line with global best practices and current economic realities. Stamp duty is chargeable on both fiscal and electronic instruments, agreements, contracts, receipts, promissory notes, memorandum of understanding, insurance policies, and other instruments stipulated in the schedule to the Stamp Duty Act. Stamp duty is chargeable in two ways. Ad valorem, that is, where duty payable is a percentage on the consideration on an instrument, or flat rates, where a fixed sum is chargeable irrespective of the consideration on the dutiable instrument or document in question. The full list is available on the website of the FRS and on our YouTube channel. The press release goes further to spell out jurisdictions of tax authorities in the administration of stamp duty. For instruments that relate to matters executed between a company and any person, jurisdiction lies with the FRS. The state internal revenue services are in charge of instruments executed between individuals. However, for banking transactions, the FRS is the sole authority vested with collection powers. This lists also the payment and remittance of stamp duty on receipts. A fixed rate of 15 naira FRS adhesive stamp is applicable in respect of all receipts. 15 naira stamp duty is also due from customers in respect of electronic transfers done by them through the money deposit banks in Nigeria, where the transfer is 10,000 naira and above. The money deposit banks have the obligation to deduct and remit the stamp duties due on such transactions. The stamp duties chargeable on all electronic transfers of money, including those initiated by an individual and received by another individual through any money deposit bank in Nigeria, shall be remitted only into the FRS stamp duties account. This account is a federation account and revenue accruing into this account is distributed monthly amongst the three tiers of government, federal, state and local at the monthly federation accounts and allocation committee meetings. This kind of nonsense has to end today. Why would the bank be removing somebody's money every uh, time like that? Mr. John. My neighbor. Yes, sir. Why are you rushing to like this? Can you imagine? I just sent money to my son and I got a debit and a lot of 15 dollars from my bank as stamp duty. I am going to seek explanation from my bank because I made a transfer, not post a letter. Hmm, Mr. John. Let me explain what stamp duty is. Stamp duty is not all about postage stamp matters. Oh. The 15 naira is a stamp duty levy charged by banks on customers who make transfers of 10,000 naira and above from one bank account to another bank account. And uh -huh. why should I pay stamp duty for my hard earned money? Mr. John, paying stamp duty levy is a civic duty for every patriotic citizen. 
The taxes we all pay are collected and used by the government to pay salaries and provide basic amenities for citizens. It's even easier to make stamp duty payments now. All you need to do as a taxpayer is to log on to the following www.stampduty.gov.ng or www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-stamping. By the way, Mr. John, it pays to pay your tax, you know. Oh, oh thank you very yes, much. Sir. Thank you, my daughter. You're welcome, my sir. regards to your family. All right, sir. This broadcast is powered by FIRS, Federal Inland Revenue Service. As we promised when we brought you the story of the launching of the Interministerial Committee on the Audit and Recovery of Back Year's Time Duties a few episodes ago, more will be coming your way on the administration of stamp duty in Nigeria. Of course, Stamp duty is just one of the amended sections in the Finance Act 2019. And so, on this episode, we want to dwell further on more aspects of the Finance Act. But before then, we have some cherry news for you. Across the land, across the states, soccer is coming the way of taxpayers. You will recall that a few episodes ago, we brought you the trailblazing news of additional COVID-19 palliatives extended to taxpayers by the FRS. The different states have followed suit. Of course, you know that majorly, the states collect personal income tax, which comprises of direct assessment for enterprise owners and payee for salaried employees. To cushion the effects of COVID-19, many states in the Federation have pushed out palliative measures. Common to all states, whose public notices we have in our possession are extension of deadline for filing of 2019 income tax returns by self-employed individuals and informal sector operators in almost all cases to September 30, 2020, as well as waiver of interest and penalties. The Akita State Internal Revenue Service on its own part has gone a step further to extend the palliatives to land matters. For example, the land discharge law rates slated to commence on July 1st have been suspended while full amnesty has been granted to all landowners in respect of areas of land discharge from 2017 to 2019. The Kita State Internal Revenue Service has also reduced by 50% the presumptive tax payable by market men and women and artisans. In the same vein, the Aquaibom State Internal Revenue Service has waived the payment of business premises levy for SMEs whose annual turnover is below 5 million naira. It has also waived the state economic development levy for SMEs whose turnover is below 5 million naira. Traders in all markets in Aquaibom have also been granted 25% discount on personal income tax for year 2020. Also in an unprecedented move, road levies, including daily ticketing, stickers and emblems, as well as haulage fees, have been suspended all over Aquaibom State for year 2020. Cherry news, you must agree with us. Thank you for staying with us. Now to our story on the Finance Act 2019. Today and in subsequent episodes, we are going to be looking at the Finance Act 2019 and its implications on the ease of doing business in Nigeria. We'll be doing this through the prism of a seminar organized by a body known as Joint Minds International. The seminar was held on Tuesday, the 3rd of March, 2020. Special guest of honor at the event, the then ICANN president, Mazin Nandi Okwadebo spoke about the timeliness of the topic of discussion. With a history of budget deficits in the country, the need to shore up revenue becomes imperative. This is essential in meeting the developmental objectives of all arms of government. Why the reforms aim to at increasing revenue they are also focused on improving ease of doing business promoting 
fiscal equity, introducing tax incentives, and reforming domestic tax laws. Lead speaker at the event was Executive Chairman FRS, Mr. Mohamed Nami, who was represented by Mr. David Ogedembe. Chairman of the day's event was Malam Ismaila Zakari, another past president of ICANN. Mr. Ogedembe presented highlights of the Finance Act. He began with the objectives. The Act is set to promote fiscal equity. It's also set to introduce incentives for investment in the economy. Another objective is to provide support for micro, small, and medium-sized businesses. And of course, we look at uh, collecting more revenue for government by the act. We look to get additional revenue for government, federal government, states, and local government. Mr. Gedembe went on to highlight the amendments made to the Companies Income Tax Act in the Finance Act, among which are redefinition of dividend and interests, as well as compulsory acquisition of taxpayer identification number by every business enterprise. I will start with Company Income Tax Act. Section 16 of the main act has been amended by Section 3 of the Finance Act. And the amendment is essentially for insurance companies. By this amendment, insurance companies can now carry forward their losses indefinitely. Before this time, they could only carry forward their losses for only four years. But by this amendment, insurance companies are now entitled to carry forward their losses indefinitely like every other company. There's also the provision of minimum tax for insurance companies who have received complaints, but that is the most that we have for now. And it talked about 0.5% of gross premium. The minimum tax for insurance companies has been limited to 0.5% of premium. And then for life insurance, it is also 0.5% of gross income. There are some other amendments that talks about reserve for unexpired risk, reserve for outstanding claims, and outgoing. Another section that has also been amended is the section 19. I will call it the almighty section 19 that talks about tax on dividends. It has been replaced by section 7 and some of the dividends that we can no longer tax includes dividend paid out of retained earnings. Before this time, if you pay dividend out of retained earnings and we looked at it and discovered that it's less than your total profit, we subject it to tax. Then also, dividend paid out of profits that are exempted, they are also now to be exempted from tax. Then profits or income of companies that are regarded as frank investment income is also to be exempted. And then distributions or dividend paid by real estate investments to its shareholder from rental income and dividend income received on behalf of those shareholders are also exempted. This one we hope we boost investment in real estate and uh, close the gap of uh, housing needs Nationwide, it is estimated that our housing deficit is in the region of 17 million. Perhaps with this incentive, more people will go into real estate and uh, that will help to close that gap. Another area of amendment is in the 
minimum tax provision. Before this time, we had a wealthy provisions for minimum tax. But all those wealthy provisions on capital, net assets, they have all been taken out and it is just now 0.5% of turnover. In fact, before now, uh, we have been accused of taxing capital. But with this new provision, I'm sure that uh, we have escaped that accusation. And of course, the companies that are exempted from minimum tax are still there. Companies carrying on agricultural trade or business, companies whose gross income is less than 25 million, and companies that are trading for the first four years of its commencement of business. All these are still exempted from minimum tax. Then, also amended is the rate of tax. Section 40 of CIT has been amended by Section 16 of the Finance Act. We're all very familiar with that now. And the exemption is such that small companies are to pay zero tax. And what is a small company? A company whose turnover is less than 25 million they are to pay tax at 0%. They are to pay CIT at 0%. And the medium, medium tax, medium-sized companies are to pay tax at 20%. Mr. Gedembe also highlighted some other provisions aimed at lessening the burden of taxation on companies. Provisional tax has been abolished. There is no more need to pay provisional tax. Before this time, companies are expected to pay provisional tax. And provisional tax represents the tax that you paid last year. You are expected to pay it within the first three months of the year. But that has been taken away. And uh, that amendment still goes on to provide bonus for a company that pays its tax 90 days before the due date. If your year end is um, 31st December and you are expected to pay your or file your returns by 30th of June, if however you take advantage of this provision and you pay your taxes for that year on or before the end of March, then you'll be entitled to some bonus. If you are a medium-sized company, you'll be entitled to 2%. And if, however, you are not in that threshold, you'll be entitled to 1%, which you will take as a credit against your future taxes. Moving on to Petroleum Profit Tax Act. There is this provision in the Petroleum Profit Tax that uh, repeals Section 60 of the PPTA. And that implies that withholding tax is now applicable on the dividend payout under PPTA. Before this time, the dividends for PPTA companies are not subject to withholding tax. But going forward, every dividend declared will be subject to withholding tax at the appropriate rate. This kind of nonsense has to end today. Why would the bank be removing somebody's money every uh, time like that? Mr. John. My neighbor. Yes, sir. Why are you rushing to like this? Can you imagine? I just said money is my son. And I got a debit and a lot of $15 from my bank as stamp duty. I am going to seek explanation from my bank because I made a transfer, not post a letter. Hmm, Mr. John. 
Let me explain what stamp duty is. Stamp duty is not all about postage stamp matters. Oh. The 15 Naira is a stamp duty levy charged by banks on customers who make transfers of 10,000 Naira and above from one bank account to another bank account. And uh -huh. why should I pay stamp duty for my hard earned money? Mr. John, paying stamp duty levy is a civic duty for every patriotic citizen. The taxes we all pay are collected and used by the government to pay salaries and provide basic amenities for citizens. It's even easier to make stamp duty payments now. All you need to do as a taxpayer is to log on to the following www.stampduty.gov.ng or www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-stamping. By the way, Mr. John, it pays to pay your tax, you know. Oh, oh thank you very yes, much. Sir. Thank you, my daughter. You're welcome, My sir. regards to your family. All right, sir. This broadcast is powered by FIRS, Federal Inland Revenue Service. Next episode, we will continue this X-ray of the Finance Act 2019 by bringing you more highlights as presented by Mr. Gedembe, who, of course, was standing in for the Executive Chairman, FIRS. We will also be looking at the two papers that were presented after the lead paper, Professor Biola Sony of the University of Lagos presented a paper on Finance Act 2019 and seven tax extant laws, what professionals should know. The other paper on Finance Act 2019 and the Nigerian business environment was presented by Mr. Sonny Umeza Michael on behalf of the DG of the LCCI. In case you're wondering what GMI is all about, Let's listen to Mr. Toby Abiola, the lead doyen of GMI. It was a dream 30 years ago when some of us in class decided to form this club. At that time, our focus was mainly what could bring us together. And in that class then, we had people who started ICANN, that was when ICANN was three, there was just three stages, who went for articleship, doing their ITAs, and um, they got qualified while they were in HND womb. Some of them who knew about accounting, maybe through their uncles and brothers, they got qualified earlier because we ran the route. But we had a focus then, and that was what we believe in. The vision was to, um, to encourage academic, social, and professional excellence. So with this in mind, our students were able to do the academic angle we graduated. We were able to do the socials we graduated, and what we had outstanding were the professional angle. We felt that um, all of us then should be chartered accountants. And if we could be, then we have to mentor other people to be chartered accountants. All of us graduated in 1990 and uh, 1991, and we went our separate ways. Our focus was mainly mentoring those students who are opportunity to have gone to the polytechnics. And as I speak, we have over 1,000 chartered accountants produced by this club. Beyond these lofty ideals, JMI has a major focus, the development of academic excellence and promotion of intellectual discourse. In the year 1995, JMI held its first seminar. In 1995, at uh, City Hall, very close by here, we had our first seminar on VAT, a dream, a reality. That 1995 seminar came on the heels of the promulgation of the Value Added Tax Decree of 1993, which is now an act of the National Assembly. Of course, the VAT law took effect from January 1st, 1994. Fast forward 2020, the Finance Act 2019 came into effect and again, 
JMI Rose to Education by organizing the one-day seminar on the Finance Act 2019 and the ease of doing business in Nigeria. The seminar coincided with the 30th anniversary of the JMI. We want to thank you most sincerely for spending time with us on today's episode of Tax Matters. Have a blessed week ahead. Thank you.